This is the Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and we are trying to help adults rediscover the power of play and figure out how to play for a living. And that brings in our two guests this week, Ian and Amy Anderson from Department 727. It's department727.com. They travel the world, they play for fun, they design websites and do cool creative work, and they're currently talking with us from Croatia in their yeah. world travel. So we'll learn all about that and much more here in the Playful Humans podcast today. And uh, if you would like to learn more about Playful Humans, go to playfulhumans.com. Here we go. All right, Ian and Amy, as you know, we like to start with the joke of the week here in the podcast. The joke of the week is brought to you by ceiling fans. I bought a ceiling fan the other day. It was a complete waste of money. He just stands there applauding, saying, ooh, look at how smooth it is. Uh, (laughs) All right. (laughs) Why why did Cinderella get kicked off the football team? She lost her footing. Uh, She was always running away from the ball. Uh, very ah. close wow. <laughs> All right. That was better. <laughs> right. Yeah, there we go. We got it started. Yeah. Well, welcome to the podcast. Why don't you just start by telling everybody a little bit about your story and your relationship and how you got into uh, traveling and, and working from 727s. I'm assuming that's how you got the uh, name of the company. Um. So the story, the the uh, backstory behind our company is that we actually were white label web designers. Um, we team up with marketing companies in the United States and we kind of become their web department. So that's where the department uh, part of it came from. And then the 727, uh, we were like, you know, how are we going to name the, you know, the department, what should it be called? And July 27th is actually the day we got married. So that's oh, awesome. there you go. Yeah. That is adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, I was married on 427, so 427. Wow, nice. But that's awesome. So when did you decide that this was going to be a travel thing? Did you start web designing first or say design the lifestyle first and then kind of fall into that? You started, oh, you started in web design before I did. Yes, like you, Mike. Started in web design, late 90s. It was much more difficult than it is now. And then um, I continued that as I grew up. <laughs> And um, she was working at a bunch of various jobs that she hated. So I taught her how to make web websites. And this is back in 2009 yeah, at this point. Yeah, around there. Yeah. Nice, yeah. And then uh, she's incredibly good at it. And so we started our own company uh, over a decade ago. Um, and we always wanted to be remote. So we were actually working uh, from our house in Tampa, Florida. Uh, we own a house there, uh, which we rented out to travel around the world. Um, and then we figured, hey, if we can work from here, can't we do this from everywhere else? And so, you know, we started thinking about that. And uh, last August, August 2020, uh, we left the United States for Aruba. And we've been to Aruba, Croatia, Italy, Montenegro, Greece. Now and we're back in, or back in Croatia. Croatia, yeah. yeah. And, and about a week and a half, we're going to be flying to Panama for three weeks. For three months. Three months, <laughs> sorry. Yes. Yeah, and um, like like you were talking about before, you know, every day we get to work together doing the same things with the same clients. So it's yeah. an awesome way to live. Yeah, I think it's really exciting. My wife and I, uh, and I'm uh, excited to hear about how you work this out together too. I've been like wanting to do this for a while. So my job yeah. is remote. Uh, all of my stuff, I, I've been working remote for the last six years. My wife owns a lifestyle concierge business where she kind of does like, virtual assistant stuff for people, but a lot of it is uh, in their homes and and things sometimes. So that's a little bit trickier, but it could be done. But we just spent a uh, couple uh, week in um, Captiva uh, in Florida. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know what that is. Sanibel and Captiva. Spent a lot of time there. Beautiful. We love getting down there uh, too. So uh, what was it like the first time you packed up and were like, uh, does it feel like you're cheating? Like you're like, wait, this can't be right. We're going to work and go on vacation at the same time. You know, talking about that, there are some definite days where I'm not sure whether it's a work day or a weekend or a vacation. Because, you know, there's some days that we wake up and maybe we've caught up on all our work and we're like, hey, you know what, let's go to the beach. 
for the afternoon or let's go out for lunch and then maybe we'll work at night. So you have that flexibility. But to answer your question, um, it was kind of strange because at the time we left, actually, uh, you know, coronavirus was just going crazy around the world. So we couldn't go to many places. That's yeah. why I went to Aruba first. Um, yeah. What do you think? I would say it's definitely weird when um, you're you're putting, taking everything that you're going to have as your like possessions and you have to figure out how to fit it into a suitcase. Yeah. Um, like that's a very odd feeling and then like kind of planning like, you know, you, you make choices and you start realizing what you do and don't actually need. Yeah. Because I mean, we have a, we had a, a four bedroom, two bathroom house in Tampa filled with stuff. And really all we need is two suitcases and two carry-ons. Yeah. That we've lived out of that for over a year now. I mean, we do still have the house. Um, yeah. We rented yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, and fortunately, our tenant um, wanted it furnished. Yeah. So that made things a bit easier yeah. for us. Yeah. And so I guess a, a long term lease there, then it sounds like. So you don't have to worry about like filling it with an Airbnb every weekend or something. Correct. Yeah, it, it's yeah. long term. Yep. It yeah. started uh, with one year. And um, this past August, August 2021, um, was the one year renewal. And our tenant, he's a great tenant. He wanted to renew again. So we have a lease in place till next August. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So, um, I guess that's still a ways away. Do you know where you're you're going after your next stop in Panama? Well, the reason why I live in Europe is because it gets much too cold in the winter. We learned that lesson uh, the hard way last year. Yeah. yeah. Rome over the holidays, much too cold for us. Yeah. So yeah, we're going to go to Panama uh, from here. And then after three months, we'll probably go down to either Buenos Aires or Rio or Chile, something like that, where it's going to be warm. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And then I, I did want to circle back to your comment about the work days because there's this awesome parable, I think it's of a uh, Mexican fisherman who like just wow. fishes a few hours in the morning and then sells his fish uh, at the market and spends the rest of the day playing with his kids, drinking margaritas on the beach. And an American businessman comes in and goes, you know, if you fished all day, you know, you could double your profits and you could buy another boat and you could scale and, and build it up. And like 20 years later, you could retire and not, not have to work. And he goes, what would you do then? And he said, uh, well, you could fish whenever you wanted, drink a margarita <laughs> on the beach, play with your kids uh, and stuff. And so I found yeah. like... If you get off the treadmill, it's actually a lot easier to keep things going. Uh, but yeah. how has that worked out for you? Well, I, I got to say, just I, I, I'm familiar with that uh, that story. It's a great story, and it's true because there's so many people that wait till they're 65 to retire to start seeing the world. But that's not necessary. Now, of course, you need to be able to make money through your laptop, obviously. But assuming you can do that, there's no reason why you have to wait. The internet's the same everywhere. It works yeah. the same for the most part. <laughs> Minus yeah, right. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Why wait till you're, till you're 65 when you can enjoy life now? Yeah. And I would say, interestingly enough, I find ever since we left home in Florida, I've gotten much better at the whole work-life balance, which I, didn't, I wasn't sure how it was going to work because you know, when you're traveling in a new place, you want to, you feel like you're on vacation sometimes and you want to go out and see things, but it's like, you still have to work. Um, but I, I've gotten much better. Um, you know, I still do all my work, but I'm, I feel like I'm living more. We're at home for some reason, even though I, I had the same flexibility in my schedule, I felt much more obligated to be like, I have to be at my desk, mm -hmm. you know, Monday through Friday from this time to this time when really yeah. there was no reason that I had to do that. Yeah. Well, that was going to be another question I was going to ask you because I've thought a lot about this and I've always wondered like if I moved to San Diego or Florida or something and would and had a house on the beach, like would it become old? Would I end up just watching Netflix in <laughs> my house, even though it's on a beach now? Or would it, because of the weather and other things, like inspire me to get out more? It sounds like maybe, Amy, for you, you do find yourself still being in a little bit more vacation mode than just settling in. And even though you are somewhere strange, doing the things you would normally you know. Yeah, because I mean, we're, we're basically in a country for about three months at a time. So it's not like we're, you know, settled down in one place. So it's always still, it's new. Yeah. So you know, like you still want to yeah. get out and see things. Um, but I will say, so it, it's starting to get a little bit cold here in Croatia. I'd say the last week or two, we kind of have found ourselves starting to settle in mm. and going to go, well, we played for like two months and we've seen, you know, pretty much everything we wanted to see. So now we're you know, focusing more on work and, you know, the next chapter, which is Panama. Yeah. But just going on what you're saying, like, there's some times where I feel like I'm in like a travel show, like yeah. I'm living in like an episode of Anthony Bourdain, because there's always new food. 
and there's new people and there's new things to see. And then every three months I get a whole new set of food and people and things. And it's, uh, it's really fun. Well, I, I wanted to ask you, Ian, about the workday too, because I found this uh, to be very interesting. I, I With salespeople that I train in my, my day job, you kind of can work until the, the work is done. And some people fool themselves that like, you have to make a thousand calls a day or whatever, or you have to call from eight to five. But if you're not getting a hold of customers, you're not doing your best work. Like the top yeah. salespeople kind of play golf on Fridays. Let's be, let's be <laughs> yeah. honest, right? Yeah. So have you found that difficult or easy for you to kind of say like, hey, if I don't have a website to work on, I can stop working. Or are you always doing business development and not able to relax? Like, how does that work out for you? Well, because of how our business is structured, where like she explained, we team up with marketing companies. So we never have to get clients that, mm -hmm. that that's given to us from the marketing companies and they mark up our service. But on a daily basis, like I was explaining to you before, you know, if we wake up in the wake up whenever we want, we don't set an alarm clock or anything, and then we look at our email. Let's say that there's nothing in there, then you know we go. Let's go. Let's go to the beach. Let's go shopping. Let's go out for food. So it's really every day is different. Yeah. There's never two days that are the same, and uh, that's part of the fun. I think is that yet yeah, I don't have that monotonous every day at the exact same time do the exact same thing life. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I call that working on goal time instead of clock time, like work until the work is done or you hit your goal yeah. and then go do something else, rest, recover, play, you know, uh, and enjoy life a little bit. I'm wondering specifically about travel and the stuff that you experienced there. What was it for you that got you jazzed up about that? Because you could have, you know, opened a restaurant or done something else or had any other, you know, type of, of job with that freedom. What, what was it that attracted you to, to travel and see in the world? I mean, I think we've always, um, we've always had this inclination where we wanted to travel. Um, and we started doing the math maybe like two years ago where we started like basically we were taking one or two week vacations throughout an entire year. Like most normal people. Yeah, you know, and that's, and it, and it was like, you know, we have all these places we want to go and we're starting to do the math and we're like, it's going to take us like decades to go mm -hmm. see all these things. And it's going to be really expensive because mm -hmm. if, you know, you're going from the United States flying to a different continent, you know, flights, you know, you got to pay for that. Then you're staying in a hotel and, you know, even some of our vacations, like back home, like one week, it got pricey. Um, so we started thinking about things a little differently and then we when we're like you know our business is structured where we can take it on the road it doesn't matter what time zone we're in because all of our projects we we give our clients like a, a turnaround time we'll have this done in three business days or five business days so that gives flexibility into the schedule um so when we started and then we're like you know we realized airbnb existed like prior to 2020 we had never stayed in airbnb no. and then you start learning like you can do these long-term you know rentals so we started i think it just was we started thinking about it differently and we're like hey we have this big travel goal we've always wanted to travel this is the way to do it and do it where you don't have to be like a millionaire you know in the last uh year just over a year we've been in five different countries um, and it's much more affordable because we're living as we're doing it than when we would take, you know, two vacations in one year in the United States. And just, just going on the, the money side of it, expense side of it, you know, we, we sold our car when we left the United States. So we don't have a car expense. It means we don't have to put gas in the car or oil car change insurance. or car insurance. Yeah. We don't, Airbnbs, you don't pay for things like utilities, water, internet, stuff like that. So we don't have any of that. Like we don't, you know, buy uh, lawn care services. We don't buy tools right. for the shed. We don't buy pictures for the wall. So we don't spend a lot our, of money, really. Our tenant, you know, is covering the yeah. mortgage, and then we get a little bit of money in our pocket every month from that. Um, and then all the Airbnbs that we stay at um, are cheaper than what our mortgage would be. So it's right. like, you know, the money that we're used to spending on our mortgage, we put towards our Airbnbs, but, you know, it always comes out less than what our mortgage is. So yeah. it's been, it's actually yeah, it's, saved money, which is interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. Like I, I said earlier, like once you get off that treadmill and you don't oh, like, yeah. you don't have to pay for the car to get to the job, to pay for the house, to, yeah, you know, right. to, <laughs> to pay for the other stuff. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, there you don't need as, as much. And, you know, I'm sure when your travels too, you're not buying a ton of souvenirs and like nothing. extra clothes and you stuff because you're going to have to yeah. lose something yeah. if you pick something yeah. new up, right? Yep. 
Yeah, like I said, we are we, we did buy a few clothes uh, here and there because of the seasons, but um, other than what's in our, our luggage and our carry on, we don't buy much of anything. Yeah. Other than experiences, we like experiences. We spend money on that. Uh, I love experiences and money. Uh, my wife and I call them excursions. Every vacation yeah, we, yeah. we debate which, which excursions we're, we're going out on. Uh, nice. So that's awesome. I, I wanted to, I guess, switch gears a little bit and talk about the relationship because I imagine that um, this has brought you a lot closer together and a lot of people experienced this in the pandemic, but what your relationship was like in this, because I know sometimes you went from working separately to working together and then now traveling together and not knowing people uh, around right away. Uh, has that been stressful or the, a bonus part help for the relationship? How did that shake out? I was gonna say, we've been doing yeah. this for so long. So it started, uh, the last time I had a traditional job was 2009. Yeah. Um, at that point, we lived in Massachusetts. That's where we were both born and raised. Um, so that was when we started working together um, every day from home. And then in 2011, we moved to Florida. That was the first time we like up and left, didn't know anybody. Yeah, we had no family, no friends. We yeah. moved to Florida. Um, yeah. So, you know, we kind of, we built a life there. Um, so by the time the pandemic hit and we started traveling, we were so used to it. Yeah, it's not much different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But but to, to get into your question, I think, um, you know, if what helps sort of build a relationship is going through all these experiences together and struggling together and dealing with the bullshit and figuring out the problems together and uh, working on everything together helps helps relationships so being able to travel with her like on, on your podcast a few months ago you had aaron gonzalez and he was saying to find the right person to work with well i have the perfect person right, right here <laughs> my best my best friend my wife my business partner my everything and i get to spend every day with her so uh, he he got it right but yeah yeah i think it's um it's really interesting uh, because you do kind of already know everything uh, about each other. And I, I, I used to work with my family and my father was a sales trainer as well. And I worked with my sister and people were like, oh, what's that like working with your, your dad? And I was like, well, any problems we had, we got over them a long time yeah. ago, yeah. you know, or like he knows what buttons for, you know, you know, to push to be, he wants to get me fired yeah. up, but yeah. uh, you know, we try to stay away from them. We've, we found those third rails and stuff a long time ago. So it's not like yeah. day to day it's any harder. It, it's, I found yeah. a lot easier working with family because um, you know, that they have your best interests at heart. Right? If, if you're working yeah. with a stranger or anything, you never quite know, or they can quit or they can, you know, um, yeah. do things in a selfish manner where, when you're working with family, that wouldn't make any sense. You really yeah, won't want to. Yeah, absolutely. Like okay. what makes her successful makes me successful in, in the same way. So, uh, you know, I, I have complete trust and confidence that whatever decision she makes uh, is going to be the right one for us. And then uh, I guess most partnerships, kind of uh, successful ones anyway, have opposite roles. Did, did you find that? Is it like, you know, one person can take care of the details and the, the books and the other person is more creative and, and playful or have you found a, a balance in that too in the work? I would say there's some things that collectively we're, we're both good at. I would say we're both overall good at creating an actual website. Um, but then we have, you know, different strengths and different weaknesses where I am much better at like the getting into like the nitty gritty like details. Um, Ian is much better at like graphic design and coming up with concepts and, um, you know, even creating like different advanced pieces of functionality for a website. He's much better at that than I am. Yeah. And so because we know that when a new project comes on, you know, we kind of don't even have to talk about who's going to be doing what, because we already know, you know, she's doing that piece, I'm doing this piece. And then, and then we, we each do our different pieces and we get to the end. And what we found is, you know, we've worked on projects independently and then together. And the ones that we work on together, which is the majority of them, um, yeah. Those always come out the best, and they're typically the easiest. Yeah, they get uh, done quicker. Yeah, yeah. So it, it really works. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of lessons in there for just teams of any kind, uh, but also mm -hmm. partnerships. It, it's that's true. It, it makes sense, you know, when you get different perspectives, you get uh, different strengths, and and as long as you can work together, you get better results. So uh, sure. that's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. 
Yeah. What do you like to do uh, for fun when you're you're traveling the world? What is uh, what do the excursions look like, or what's your favorite thing to do? This all depends on the country. Yeah. Um, when we were so we were in Rome over the holidays, we were there from December to February, um, and it was really we got there right before they like shut down tourism. Um, so we really get to experience Rome without any tourists, which was amazing. <laughs> um, so like one of the things we get to go to the Colosseum. Um, and I don't know if you've seen online like pictures of the Colosseum where it's like rows deep of people and everyone's like fighting for right. their picture. We went to the Colosseum with like 20 people. So I mean, yeah, it was like, it was wow. basically, and like everyone was spread out. So like when we felt like we got to see like the Colosseum, you know, just the two of us. It was yeah. amazing. Um, what other? And then in Greece, we went up to the Acropolis with yeah. like barely uh, not many people. Yeah. So it really depends on what country we're in. And how far we want to venture out, because there's some places, you know, we need to get an Uber to. Or when we were in Greece, we actually went to Santorini, but we were staying in Athens. So we actually need to get a flight for that one. It's a bit more planning. But yeah, it depends on where we are. Like, uh, we've been enjoying scuba, uh, scuba diving, snorkeling. snorkeling here. And we rented jet skis here. Jet skis on a work day where yep. that was one of the days we didn't have many emails. Like, baby, let's go rent some jet skis down there. And we did that for the afternoon. So it's great. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I did that in uh, Captiva for the first time since like high school or college. And oh, it was uh, fun, that isn't was it? A blast. Yeah. Yeah. Touring around the, the bay down there was, was yeah. awesome. Beautiful place. So you've mentioned a couple of the trips coming up. I, I guess I always ask people what's on their fun bucket list, but I'm sure you have a long list of places you want to visit. But are there any fun things you, you want to do, career goals or like, experiences that are at the top of the, the fun bucket list? Uh, well, so our next destination is, of course, Panama. We're staying right outside Panama City. So got to see the Panama Canal, see what that's all about. I have no idea what it's about. Um, it, it's going to be kind of fun, but I've convinced her to finally write a book with me. So we'll be doing that. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, we just started the outline. You started the outline. Yeah. Um, I also want to learn some sort of martial arts in Panama, we've been looking at Krav Maga, so that looks fun. Yeah. We might learn that. Um, but actually, just so we can't actually plan that far ahead in advance. So that's really the only thing because I can answer because of COVID. Yeah. So we can't yeah. go anywhere we want to because different rules and they change all the time. So there's some times where we don't know what country we're going to be in in like two weeks. Yeah. But we, we figure yeah. it out at the end. <laughs> yeah. What What's a country that uh, you haven't been able to get to that that you want to get to, Amy? There's so many. Initially, we thought we were going to get to Europe and then stay in Europe for, you know, a few years. But then we also learned that it was too cold. Yeah. Um, right. As of right now, uh, when we're, so we're hopping the pond back, we're going to Panama. Um, as of right now, we want to go to Argentina. I, I believe as of right now, unless something has changed recently, we can't even go there. We're hoping um, to spend like a year in that area. So hopefully the rules will change. Um, he wanted to go to Bali. Like that was yeah. off the list. Yeah. Uh, we, we couldn't go to France. We couldn't go to Spain. Now these things change all the time, right. but right. at the time that we wanted to go to these places, it was shut down. So we can't really plan that far in advance, but we don't really need to. If it's just us, we, we don't have kids, we don't have pets. Yeah. So it doesn't matter really. Yeah. yeah. I think that's awesome. Anything else uh, on your fun bucket list, Amy? Any uh, like thing you want to do or, or anything you're excited about? I mean, there's so many more countries I want to see. Anything particular that I want to do? Anything? I'm trying to think. I, nothing's coming to mind. I'm sure after it'll be one of those things. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> after actually, like, why didn't I say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, I, I think it's uh, interesting. I, I, both of you seem very active and you like to go and, and do things and visit and see oh, cool man. places. I know, you know, some people that I talk to have, they want to uh, do art or, you know, experience some music somewhere. Like I think, you know, in your South American trip, that would just be a ton of fun to experience the music and cultures and, yeah. and yeah. things down there. So I guess last question before we play a game is... Um, other thing I've always wondered about is the language. It sounds like you've been to uh, several places that are not English speaking. How, how has that worked out for you? It's, it's yeah. actually, um, it's been fine. Um, yeah. Surprisingly, like English is widely spoken. 
Um, I would say the countries that we went to were maybe here and there. It was more like, you know, broken English was Montenegro. Um, but even then it was like, you know, you could work around it. But I think the most interesting thing that we've learned about English since we traveled is that English is the language that you could have two different, uh, you could have people from two different countries that speak two different languages. They communicate in English. English like bridges the gap. Um, actually our Airbnb host, he lives in the apartment upstairs. Obviously he speaks Croatian, um, but he's fluent in English. And he was telling us the story where he went to, to France and he was so frustrated because nobody spoke where he was, nobody spoke English. And he's so used to like meeting people, you know, as an Airbnb host coming from all over the world where they all use English as like, again, to bridge the gap, to have a conversation. So English, um, has we've we've been fortunate that yeah. that seems to be the role yeah but just cool. just talking about language so we're staying in a building in an airbnb with about 11 different units and like she said the airbnb host lives above us but his parents live below us they're in their 70s and the mom is fantastic and she's she's made us quite a few croatian dishes to try but she speaks somewhat english but a lot of times when we go outside, we have to walk by her door. That's where the stairs are. And she teaches us Croatian words. Yeah. And get, like, so we get word like a day. Croatian word of the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, walking out there. And we would never have these types of experiences yeah. if we were just doing this from our house in Tampa. We wouldn't interact with these people. Yeah. But it's great to be able to, you know, say, uh, so, Dobro jutro. Which is That's good morning. morning in Croatian. I learned that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, all right. You ready to play a game? Yes. Totally ready. Let's do it. All right, we are spinning our wheel of games. There are 10 games that it could land on, and you got Awkward Questions. Awkward ah, Questions perfect. is uh, yes. one of my favorites. I'll start with an easy one that I like. Uh, would you rather have a tail or horns for the rest of your life? Yeah. Uh, horns. Definitely horns. Because you can't, really? you know, what is a tail going to do for you, really? Horns might be useful. Uh, you could see, I guess it depends on if you get to pick the horns, right? Uh, oh, or oh, the yeah. tail, if it's, <laughs> the tail's like prehensile, uh, and you can swing around on it or like pick stuff up, you know, smack the dog okay, or something. That's true. Yeah. Uh, that's good. But, uh, all right. If you became president of the United States, what's the first thing you would do? Getting tougher. Ooh. <laughs> How honest This is going to turn into a political conversation. How honest should sure. I be? Uh, yeah. I would, I would probably, uh, <laughs> you know, give uh, the people, the American people, a break from uh, all news for like a month, because I think that would calm things down a bit in the country. That's, wow, that's a great answer. Yeah. Really good. good. If I had to answer that, um, yeah. I would say I would let people decide how they want to live. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you can extrapolate from that what you will. <laughs> But uh, I feel like the government is overstepping their their boundaries on certain things right now. But uh, I would give people the freedom to, to choose uh, what they want to do in life. I think that makes sense. And that's actually my next question for you, uh, which I think is an interesting one for you. I usually ask people, if you're homeless, what city would you choose to, to live in? But technically, I guess you are homeless. Uh, totally. so, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> out of all of your travels so far, which city would you end up? Do you think you're going to land anywhere uh, eventually? And where would that be? Um, I don't think we found like if like we were to pick a new place, like maybe to buy a second home. Um, I, I love Croatia. I really do. I think of all the places we've been, that's my favorite. But I don't think I've found a place yet that I, I would commit to like going to, oh, we'd put down roots there. Correct. I agree. I would say when you take everything into consideration, I would say the United States is still the best country in yeah. the world. Yeah. You know, different places have maybe one thing better or another thing better, but when you take it all, I would say the United States is the place to be. Now, where in the United States? Well, we like warm weather, so we wouldn't be going anywhere very north. I'd probably We'd say probably stay in Florida. Florida yeah, <laughs> anywhere there, really. Yeah, it's interesting. I think especially in the United States, like every place has its thing, and if you grew up there, it's not a big deal. Like, you know, Florida has hurricanes, but California has earthquakes or, you know, uh, Kansas has tornadoes. So it's like, yeah, everybody's got something. If you grow up with it, it's not a, a big deal. Uh, and then, yeah, like you said, further north, uh, it's winters that I would not want to deal with like yeah, 18 inches we, of snow. Or we hope we never see snow again in our lives. 
<laughs> I don't know if I would go that far. I do like, you know, skiing or a good white, white Christmas, but right. I, I'm with you. My wife and I would be with you. We'll, we'll meet you in, in Florida. Um, I think she's currently looking at Lakewood Ranch uh, for, for places. So, uh, around Tampa. So maybe we'll, okay. we'll catch you there when you get back to the United yeah, States. Perfect. Thanks so much for being on the uh, podcast. Anything? Uh, I mean, they can go to department 727, us. but you don't really uh, take outside clients. Anything we can do to help you or, or ask their gifts for the audience? Well, uh, you know, because of how we live and how we've been able to structure our business, we're actually going to be teaching other people that want to live like this, how to do this. So if you go to webdesignersacademy.com, that's actually where we're going to be teaching people everything we know about web design and specifically building a web design business where you can be location independent so you can live like this. Hey, that sounds awesome. Webdesignersacademy.com. That's yeah. correct. Yep. Yeah. Webdesign Academy. Awesome. Well, sounds like fun to me. I might be uh, checking that out there as Perfect. well, since that's in uh, in my background. If you would like more information on Playful Humans, go to playfulhumans.com. We're helping other adults rediscover the power of play and play for a living. Find things like connection, confidence, creativity, uh, better workplace cultures and, and teams. Uh, if you want more information on that, go to playfulhumans.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to this right now. And then send me any recommendations for future guests or reach out to me on socials. See you soon. Don't wait for tomorrow. Live for today. Keep on chasing the sunshine. And go out and play. <laughs> go play, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>